This is the impossible Mari Mouton here with We Train Dogs, and today we're going to talk about how to take your dog into high distraction environments. Okay guys, one of the first things I want you to do when you take your dog to a dog park is to have a strategy. Notice how we start on the outside of the dog park, guys. We did, we did not just get out and walk straight into the dog park. We're actually gonna start on the outside. And that's because Zeus is actually a fairly well-trained dog. Um, he does really well with us. He does not put a lot of pressure on his handler. What we're doing is we're worried about the other handler, guys. And what we're trying to do is we're trying just to employ our strategy for the training session. And that is basically just to be able to introduce him to other dogs. And that's the thing is when you come to a dog park, there are lots of distractions, there's a lot of stuff going on. Actually, as soon as we got there, there's actually a fight that happened um, right in front there. And so we started doing sit stays right in the front area. We try to work our way over to the more busy parts of the dog park. And we wanna start adding some obedience behaviors like sitting, like doing down stays, that sort of stuff. And we wanna do this in the face of distraction. So what I'm hoping for right here is actually between the, the drone and the dog on the other side, I wanna produce some distractions right here and I want him to see those distractions and basically not react. We're trying to be relatively loose on the leash here, guys. We're not trying to be super heavy. I don't wanna to have to scream a whole bunch of commands. And we wanna also be able to change directions and stop and start and not have him try to take control of the situation. So taking your dog to a dog park and then having random uh, fights and stuff like that and then making your dog do a sit or, or going into a down or something like that can really help with changes of energy and just getting them to understand what you want. So guys, what I also recommend is that you start slow and then work your way up. Start in the more calm parts of the park and then work your way to the higher distraction parts. Now, right after that fight, he got a little bit excited and you see how she's trying to put him into the down and he's taking a little bit of time here. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna show her how to put him into the down. And um, what we wanna do is just work in that situation um, and work with those distractions and then get him to engage with those beha do behaviors like sitting and doing down stays and stuff like that. Um, because what you're gonna find is even a fairly solid dog in the face of a dog fight or a high distraction um, or a drone or something like that flying over them, they might take a step back. And it's not because they're trying to be bad, it's because you, you haven't necessarily worked that behavior before. So guys, start in the calmer areas, work your way to the, to the higher distraction environments, and then you're gonna ask more and more from him as you go on here. And so that's what we're working on here, is just making him do those same behaviors. He was able to do a down stay really, really quickly and really, really easily before that fight and before that really high distraction. And now that there's been that change of energy, he's taking a step back. And so that's why we're focusing, focusing on that a little bit more. And we're trying to make sure that he engages in, in those behaviors effectively. All right, so another thing that this really helps us do by working in the, the front of the dog park and not just walking straight in is also guys, we're getting the lay of the land. When we first started doing this training session, there were some dogs that were off leash, there were some dogs that were just running around, some dogs that not only did we think were aggressive, but actually turned out to be aggressive because later on there were some fights that happened at the dog park. And so guys, if I have a really well-trained dog, I don't want to just get out of my car and then walk inside the dog park and have my dog get attacked by some other dog that had no other handling experience. I want to really work my way up and work my way into the, the higher distraction environments. And if you see here, we actually got really, really lucky today and we ran into another handler that was training their dog. And so what we did is we just recruited the person. We said, hey, can we work with you? I see you're doing a little bit of training. Can we do a little bit of training? And it actually turns out that person happened to also be another professional handler. That's another thing that I want you to think about, guys. When you went, when you went out to the dog park, um, it's a nice busy day. Uh, I believe it was a, a Saturday, so there were lots of people there, but the two best dog handlers there were, did not have their dog inside the dog park. And the two highest level dogs were outside of the dog park. And the reason why is because inside the dog park, it was bedlam. There was chaos. There were dogs that were fighting. There were people that weren't paying attention, people on their cell phone, people doing things that, that weren't had nothing to do with dog handling. And so we actually found that it would probably be a better training session to actually stay on the outside and use those dogs as a distraction. And then luckily we found in somebody else that had the same idea and then we recruited them. So guys, if you're, if you're working on introducing your dog to other dogs, you wanna find like-minded people. You don't wanna find people that don't care about dog obedience and just gonna let their dog do anything. You wanna find people that are trying to get their dog to perform the right way. So what you're doing here is a drill that we call circling the drain where we're working on the outside and as you can see we're just starting to get closer and closer to each other 
And at first they're, they're at arm's length or more, um, usually about 10 to 15 feet. And we're just gonna start circling and start getting closer and closer. And the goal is to get to the point to where we can meet, we can have a, a, a greeting, and I can shake that person's hand and not have my dog assert themselves. So um, if we were just to get out of the, of the car and she was just sitting there and we walked straight up to her, um, then you know the other dog has the opportunity to assert itself and possibly um, try to say hi to our dog. So even if our dog is fairly well trained, if the other handler isn't on their game, then they can accidentally teach our dog that whenever we are running into handlers at the dog park, that, that they're not gonna control their dog, their dog is just gonna engage with you, so then you need to control this space. And so we don't wanna send that message. So what we do is we find somebody that's on the same page, that's working in the same direction, that's willing to work with us. She, she took directions really, really well, considering I had never met her before. And we just started working towards you know the same purpose. And that's what I love about doing dog training, guys, is that if you're doing dog training, um, and you're in an area where you're having some issues, there's probably another person that's having some issues there as well. And if you guys work together, then you, you find that um, you know you can get to the, the place where you want to be. And you know what I love about you know dog training, or I love about you know um, dog people in general, is we're very sociable people. So if you recruit somebody to help you, then a lot of times they will. And this isn't a, a perfect session right here um, in terms of the, the handling. Uh, we, she, our, the handler that we're working with is a little unsure at certain times, so I'm trying to improve her confidence and just make sure that she is controlling the situation. And as you can see, you know, you don't need a super high level of handling here. You really just need to be on top of your game. And as you can see right here, what we're doing is we're working on coming, getting parallel with each other and coming to a stop without our dogs asserting themselves. So. Um, what you're going to notice is as you get parallel to a dog, as you're walking, a lot of times your dog will either try to um, basically walk towards the other dog or they'll try to delay you in some way. Maybe they'll surge or something like that. We're practicing on getting in close, to pro in close proximity with someone within five to 10 feet of them and not having our dog surge. So being able to stop right there you see how even her dog, it took a second to get that sit, guys. And right before we were working, her dog was doing a perfect sit stay and a perfect down stays. So her dog is actually very, very functional, but you notice how when we got parallel here, even her dog took a step back. That dog is also trained to be a service dog. So these, these are two fairly high level dogs here. Um, they're, they're a little bit, um, they're probably more than what the average person you know, has. And even in this situation, in this high distraction environment, guys, they are prone to taking a step back. And you're also talking about two different handler systems. So me and her, you know, we didn't, she had a, a, a prong collar on her dog. We had a martingale collar on ours. So we didn't necessarily have the same system, but we were working towards the same purposes here, guys. And these sessions don't have to be super long. When you're meeting with someone, you know, five that's to seven minutes, nice you just want to work them in. Yeah. And you just want to, that's once again, just good. meet with someone that's not going to undo your training, guys. Uh, try to find somebody that is, you know, calm and their dog is calm and then go up to them and then have a fairly short meeting anywhere from you know five to ten seconds or something like that and then you basically just want to walk away from them um, and you basically want to keep uh, your dog a calm state while you're at the dog park so as soon as they start to digress or they start to take a step back then we go ahead and cut the training session short or we'll go to an area of the dog park that's much more calm <laughs>